Hey there, amazing audience who have joined the revolving time today. Get ready to embark on an unforgettable adventure with us. Subscribe now and let's uncover the hidden secrets and truths together. Discovering that someone you trusted has deceived you can feel like a tidal wave of emotions crashing down. The hurt, anger, and confusion can be overwhelming. But let me tell you, this moment does not define who you are or your worth. Well my friends, today's story is published by Love of Me Life 75. My wife cheating on me with next door neighbor and got caught. On investigation I was convinced that it had been going on for three weeks or more and I collected all the evidence. Well let's start the story and see what she gained or lost from her cheating. First of all, I want to tell you about my parents. Dad loved CW Boy movies from being a kid. He had a new CW Boy suit as soon as he grew out of the last one, complete with his six-gun shooter cap gun. Every movie that came out Dad went to see it. He collected all sorts of things he saw in the movies he had been to watch. Dad never ever grew out of watching CW Boy movies. Dad met my mother. She also loved CW Boy movies but she loved the sloppy side of them. They fell in love and married. They were both great film addicts. In their favorite moves they would say to each other the sections they loved the most. Before I tell you my first name, my second name is Rogers. Please don't laugh, it is Roy. Yes, I was named after Roy Rogers. Yes, that's the one the 50s actor. Always dressed in white and rode a white horse called Trigger with his dog called Bullet. I am so glad my second name was not Hayes if it was. They would have called me Gabby. As I have said, they were great film addicts. Yes, you guessed it my mother's name is Dale they married and became Mr. and Mrs. J and D. Rogers. I grew up watching all the CW boy movies and you might as well know my screen girlfriend was a blonde Doris Day. Most men fell in love with her and I did. But it was going to happen to me. So, let's get back on track. I was standing in the cinema queue which was a long one. We were right at the back with my mate, and two girls were in front of us. They laughed and giggled and kept on turning round to look at the pair of us. We started to talk. I fancied the one with the long black hair, and my mate fancies the other girl. When we got to the pay desk, I paid for the four of us. I sat next to the one I fancied, and my friend sat next to the one he fancied. And before you ask it was a CW boy movie. I did not watch much of it. I was glancing over at her. The girls went to the loo and my mate bought the ice creams. At that time, we agreed to take them home. My girl's name was Fiona and I had never met a girl with that name before. Fiona was not the movie star you are thinking of. But to me she was that little thing, something special to me. She was the same height as me and what a shaped body she had. Well, that was the beginning of us dating. As we dated, I found out that Fiona liked the same things as myself. I would meet her after work and take her home. Then I would have to double back to meet her later. We dated for 12 months. Then it was time to ask that one question to her. Will you marry me? I went down on bended knee and she gave me the right answer yes. The next thing I did was to ask her father for his permission to take Fiona's hand in marriage. He did the usual thing asking me how I was going to keep his lovely daughter fed, clothed and happy for the rest of her life. I told him all my plans and I wanted three children one of each and one of them. He laughed at the one of them bit. He was happy with what I told. Fiona's parents planned the wedding in 12 months' time. We had planned a weekend away in a cabin four months before the wedding with my mates and Fiona's friends. There were six of us. Fiona's father took me to one side. No funny business with Fiona I want to walk my lovely daughter up to the altar in white, her father said to me. I knew what he meant. Fiona's mother had a long talk with her I found out. The subject was the birds and the bees. Update. We went away for the weekend starting on Friday night. I wanted to get Fiona alone and I knew she wanted to be alone with me. There was a hotel down the road from where the six of us were staying so I booked a room on the phone. The problem was how to lose the other four without them twigging what we were up to. So, I asked them if I could take the car into town with Fiona to do a little shopping. I want to buy her a present for being together for 12 months and getting engaged to be married. The four of them all said okay. I looked for my wallet and checked inside it if I had enough money in it right in front of the four of them. Fiona said, stop counting your money there won't be much left when we get to town. With a laugh, off to town but the hotel was in the opposite direction. When we were out of sight, I turned around. Fiona had her grandmother's wedding ring on her finger when we got to the hotel desk. I dropped a case on the floor. I picked up the key and off to the room locking the door behind us. We had only had long kisses in the past. This was going to be our first time together. Fiona was 5 feet 6 tall and 100 pounds at her heaviest with an eye-catching 38-24-37 figure that never failed to catch my eyes. 
Her frame accentuated her perfectly formed curves. She had thick long black hair that seemed to spill over her shoulders. In all directions, her face was so young and pretty that she could only be described as angelic. With soft brown eyes that could make her look so innocent she appeared much younger than her years. I held her at the waist and kissed her with as much passion I had in me and she kissed me back. After making love, I helped Fiona get dressed. I wanted to remember her sexy body. Then I got dressed. I paid the bill and we drove back to the cabin. Fiona told me on the way back her mother told her to be careful. When you are in bed together and try to take your time, you will never forget the first time. Then Fiona told me she was on the pill. Her mother made her do it in case. You let me put that rubber on, I said. I wanted to know if you had listened to my father when he told you he wanted me in white when he walked me up the altar. Sorry but wait until tomorrow, I have rebooked the room, Fiona said. The four of them said, well what have you bought her for? The four of them were smiling at us. They had guessed where we had been. Said it could not come fast enough for me. We were in the room for 10.30 the booking in time. We were there until 5. I was drained and Fiona was sore. But what a time we had. I wanted to be married next week, but it was all booked. Four months it was going to drag. So instead of going to the movies, I booked a hotel every week. We were having a great time enjoying each other's bodies. The great day came, and we were on our honeymoon for two weeks. I was burnt out and Fiona was burnt out. Thank God the weather was lousy so we were not sunburnt. Just burnt out. Sorry I forgot to tell you I am a project engineer. I may be away from home one or two nights once a month. Sometimes I am away Friday, said Sunday coming home on Monday. My hotels and food were paid for by the company. The pay was good and expenses were even better. Fiona was a pa. We had been in our house for two years with Tim and Jane. Our neighbors had decided to move because the house was too big for them. So it went up for sale. We had a farewell drink and said our goodbyes. The house next door was bigger than ours. It had six bedrooms where we only had four. We intended to have three kids that was why we bought it. The house next door had a swimming pool and a sun bathing area. The new owner was in the movie business. His name was Rod Taylor married to Nancy and he had a friend that was going to live with them off and on. I was coming up to winter and we had drinks round at Rod and Nancy and we did the same at our house. Rod was good at telling stories of what went on when they were filming. It was all the mistakes that were made. They were endless. Rod and Nancy always sat close together and kissed from time to time in front of me and Fiona. We had drinks right through the winter and his friend came to visit four times. He was as bad as Rod at telling stories of what went wrong on the set. Spring came and summer was here and it was going to be a hot one. Rod and Nancy invited us to the pool whenever we wanted. So, in the evening and weekends, we used it. Fiona wore a full-piece bathing suit. When we were having drinks, we somehow changed places. Nancy was sitting with me and Fiona next to Rod. She was always looking at him. She was mesmerized with him because he was in the movies. I noticed Rod was getting closer and closer to Fiona and Nancy was going the same to me. Rod said, my friend will be here next weekend. Can you come over for drinks? I was going to be one of those years in my job. I would be away every other Friday, said Sunday for the next four weeks. I was not looking forward to it one little bit. I said, sorry I won't be able to come. I will be away Friday, said Sunday but I will be back on Monday. Sorry to hear that, Rod said looking at my wife. I had a funny feeling about me, but I was not sure at the time. Friday came I packed my bags and left Fiona with a long kiss. Off on my job away since Friday, said Sunday coming home for evening on Monday. I walked in the house calling out I am home honey. There was no reply. Her car was in the drive. I know she is next door with Rod and Nancy. There she was next door in the sunbathing area with Rod next to her. She was wearing a bikini, one I had never seen before. I walked over to her and kissed her on the head and she jumped up covering up her body. Drink Roy, Rod said to me. No thanks, come on home I got a few things to tell you, I said to Fiona. I wanted her in the bedroom for a welcome home treat. I got my one quick treat, but something was missing. So, I asked how the weekend went with Rod Nancy and his friend. All she said was not bad. But Nancy had to go away to her sister's on set and was back at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon. I found out then she was alone with Rod and his friend. Update 1. The next two weeks were good together then Friday came I packed my bags and left Fiona with a long kiss. Off on my job away since Friday, said Sunday coming home for evening on Monday. I walked in the house calling out I am home honey. I went next door to see Rod and Nancy. There she was next in the sun bathing area with Rod wearing a new bikini. It was the same as two weeks before. Come on home, I said to Fiona. I wanted her in the bedroom for my welcome home treat. It was what you would call a quickie. And that was my lot until the following night. I booked the rest of the week off. 
I wanted to check the house out. I went through all her clothes, and I found new underwear I had never seen before, and I found smaller bikinis. Then I picked up her five-year diary. I looked at the last two weekends when I was away. I got the biggest shock of my life. The notes were brief. Sat Rod duck at me three times at the sunbathing area. His friend duck at me three times in the same place. I enjoyed so much. Her comment was I had never been duckhead so well before, and I wanted to do it all again in two weeks' time with the pair of them. I turned the page over to Sunday. Rod is so good at ducking me. Pity Nancy was back at 3 o'clock Sunday I may had got a duck a couple of times. I need a rest before Roy gets home. I am sore. I turned the pages last weekend. I was even more shocked. Nancy was ducking Rod and his friend was ducking me. It was different when I had sex with Nancy. It went on all Friday night all day set and up to 9 o'clock on Sunday night. I was well duck ed. Can't wait until the next weekend when Roy is away. I slammed the dairy shut in anger at my wife. She was a slot and if she had been given the underwear and bikinis, she was a prostitute in my mind. My wife was a slot. Okay you like the ducking the CW boy you can have him I said to myself. Then I remember in the attic there was a window in the attic. I looked out and I had a full view of the sunbathing area. Where is that periscope that the people had left in the house? You know the ones for seeing over walls and round corners without anyone seeing you. And I had a mate John who had an up-to-date expensive digital camera. So, I rang him and asked if I could borrow it for a day or so. John said, you had best around, and I will show you how to use it. I was round at his house in half an hour, and I told him what I wanted to use it for. John said, you had best have the movie one then. It lasts up to 16 hours of recordings. Here is the tripod for it and here is a still camera with zoom lenses on it and use it with the tripod. Roy, how do you want to keep a copy? On long play DVDs I was thinking, I said to John. No go and buy these USBs. They will store everything on them. They are expensive but worth every penny. Roy, do you want me to transfer all the information for you and make copies of the stills? John said to me, could you do all that from Sunday night to Wednesday? I said to John, no, they will be all ready for you by Wednesday lunchtime. All I want is a bottle or two of my favorite scotch, John said to me. Deal, I said. I went to the shop John told me to go to and I bought four USBs. They cost a bit. I waited until Fiona came home that Tuesday night while we were having dinner. I asked her how it was last weekend. She told me she went to Rod and Nancy and his friend was there again. She told me they had a good time, but they all missed me. I asked Fiona if Nancy had given her any bathing suits. She said no but Rod and his friend bought her some new ones. That made her into a prostitute in my book. We went to bed and did not make love. It seemed she did not seem to care not one little bit. I lay there thinking about the night I met Fiona. I remembered the girl I was going to date the following night. But Fiona took her place. Her name was Diana and she was as attractive as Fiona. I bit my teeth. I wished I had never seen Fiona that night. Hang on, Diana works in the same company as Fiona. I wondered if she would be willing to help me. Wednesday, I rang where Diana worked and asked if we could meet. I said, don't say a word to Fiona. We met at a local cafe. I told Diana all about it. She sat and listened. Then she spoke. Roy, I will help you and I know people that also will help. All I want from you is one thing, Diana said. Whatever it is, the answer is yes. I want you to make love to me. God is that all I will make love to you forever if you give me the chance, I said. Does that mean you marry me? As soon as I am free from that cheat I am married too. What about tonight? Diana smiled, saying, six. I left Diana and went to buy one of those silent drones with a high zoom camera fitted. It cost me a packet with two sets of high-powered batteries. The man who sold it to me showed me how to use it in the back of the shop. I went to the park and played with the drone until the batteries started to run out. The batteries would last up to 12 hours before recharging. I was waiting for her to come home from work. Diana opened the door. I closed it and I was all over her. In minutes we were in bed for the next three great long hours. I went home Fiona asked where I had been I told her with an old mate John. Thursday, I went to the park and practiced with the drone. Diana took half a day off. I was in bed with her until six. I made a promise to Diana I would be with her as often as I could. Update 2, Friday, I was in my lawyer's office. I wanted a divorce. I told him about the diary and the conversation I had had with Fiona. All he said was, I need proof. I said, make the paper work out. You will have proof soon I think. I practiced with the drone. I also used the still camera with the zoom lenses on. Over the weekend I had to make love to Fiona. Sorry I duck at the slot. Every day up to Thursday I practiced with the cameras and the drone I could zoom in on a pinhead. Monday, Wednesday, and I was with Diana. The other two nights I duck at the slot. 
Thursday night we got an invite from Rod and Nancy. It was not an invite. It was to make sure I would be away Friday, sat in Sunday coming home on Monday. I played along with Nancy, and Rod said something to Fiona. Yet I did over here to be here for 11 on both days. I guessed his friend would be there over the weekend. We went home and I duck at her. That was going to be my last time with the slot. Friday, I packed my bags and left Fiona with a long kiss. It had been 4 in the afternoon before I left for the so-called job. Little did she know the job was finished two weeks before. I was hoping for no Friday night of ducking. Before I left the house the cameras were all set up in the attic. With all batteries charged and the drone's batteries charged. That Friday night Diana and I went out for dinner as soon as Diana had finished work. She told me Fiona was a happy soul all day long and we both knew why. We went over our plans then we went to Diana's and god what a night of true love making we had. Sad it was going to be a hot day. I drove to my house and parked down the road out of sight at 10.50. Opened the boot and lifted out the drones with a high zoom camera fitted. Powered it up the silent drone and the remote controller. And sent it over Rod's house sun bathing area. And zoomed in. I only wanted the sun bathing area. I set the drone into hover mode. I put the remote controller down in the car and covered it up and locked the car. I waited until Fiona went round to Rod and Nancy. I was in the house up to the attic I used the periscope until the ducking started. Sad it was going to be a hot day. I waited until Fiona went round to Rod and Nancy. I was in the house minutes after 11 o'clock and up into the attic. I used the periscope until the action was going to start. Three of them chatted away until noon, and they were on their second drink. Then he walks his friend. Rod greets him followed by Nancy and Fiona greets him with a kiss. His friend goes inside and minutes later he comes out. Rod said something to Fiona. I switched on the movie camera with the voice recorder turned on as high as possible. I wanted to hear what they had been saying later, when I watched it later. Fiona's hands went behind her back and off came her bikini top showing her great pair of teeth. After filming their activities, I switched off the cameras and plugged the batteries in the charger, and left the house by the front door heading to my car, opened the boot, uncovered the remote controller, and brought back the drone to the car, powering it down. As soon as I got to Diana's, I put the batteries on charge. Diana could see I was raging mad. I was pacing up and down clenching my fists and swearing under my breath all night long. She left me alone to let me deal with it. I did not tell what I had been watching that would come later. I now had to wait for Sunday at 11. Sunday was going to be a hot day. I did the same on Saturday. Drove to my house and parked up at 10.50. Out came the drones powered up in the remote controller and sent it over rods and zoomed in. Set the drone into hover mode. Remote controller in the car and covered it up. I waited until Fiona went round to Rod and Nancy. I was in the house up to the attic I used the periscope until the ducking started once again. It was hotter than Saturday, but I was cool in the attic. New charged batteries in the cameras and sat back and waited. I was the same as Saturday. I was so glad at that moment what I had found out. By the end of Sunday, I had all I wanted. I went round to John's and returned his cameras. I said, still on for Wednesday lunchtime. Yes, did you get the USB? John said. Yes, I got four here and when I am divorced from her you can have two of them. What about the still photos? I said to John. All will be ready for you by Wednesday lunchtime, John said to me with a smile. Don't forget my two bottles of scotch. No but in my book it's six, I said. Wednesday lunchtime I was out of work in a flash at lunchtime. Round to John's and picked up three sets of photos and the four USB. Back at my lawyer's office I handed him one set of photos and a USB, saying to him there's all the proof you need. When can you have her served with divorce papers? What about Thursday in 15 minutes before she finishes work? My lawyer hinted at. Great, do it, I said. Update 3. I left his office and rang in work. I told them I was feeling sick. I am going home. I went to Fiona's father's office and wanted to let him know what was going on. The problem was his little girl. He idealized her and she could do no wrong in his eyes. He was going to get the biggest shock of his life. The other thing he took no prisoners and he made them pay thank god it was not my fault. I knocked on his door saying, sir may I talk to you? Roy, you don't have to call me sir, it's father or dad to you, he said with a slime on his face. And what brings you here must be something important. Sit down, he said. I looked at him shuffling in the chair looking round the room. I did not want eye contact with him, so I dropped my head. Roy what's up, have you two had a row, he said. He knew there was something wrong. I looked up and his face had changed and was staring at me. I felt very uncomfortable. Roy, what have you come to tell me to spit it out? He said, Sir what I am going to tell you please keep calm. And I am not the one at fault gulping all the time. I am going to divorce Fiona because she is cheating on me with two men and a woman. 
They live next door to us. Here are photos and here is a USB of her ducking them this Saturday and Sunday. It has been going on for three weeks and it may be more, I said. Here is a photocopy of her diary for the two weekends before I took the recording and photos, I said. Her father did not say a word. He looked at me. He looked at one or two photos and threw them down. Sir please give me 24 hours. I need to challenge Fiona about it. Then you can have your say with her, I said. He sat there staring at me then he spoke. You know the names, he said. Yes, they will be in trouble when it's all out in the open and their careers will be shattered. If you leave it to me. Sorry but Fiona is up to her neck in it. Roy what's on the USB? He said. I gulped. Sir you will have to watch it, I said. I will be over on set at 10. I want you there, he said to me with anger in his voice. I stood up heading for the door and looked at him. In 10 minutes, I had shattered his life forever. I went for a drink and then to my house and played out my last hours with Fiona. Thursday came and I told Diana I would be there with her as soon as I could. Thursday 15 minutes before Fiona was to finish work in the office. A man walks in the office asking for Mrs. Fiona Rogers. That is, I she said. You are Mrs. Fiona Rogers. Yes. He handed to her the papers saying, You have been served in front of all these people, he said to her. Diana was making a movie of it all at the same time. The office was dead silent. Fiona was dumbstruck then she looked round. All she could see was people hiding their faces. The only one looking at her was Diana. Fiona went to her desk and tried to phone me on my mobile. I did not answer it. She kept on trying. She went out of the office as a thunderstorm opened up. She was drenched by the time she got to her car. She was driving home and the heavens opened up and the traffic came to a standstill. And that did not help one little bit. When she got home, she stormed into the house, screaming her head off at me. I didn't give a duck. What the HLL is this? You are going to divorce me on what grounds? She said. Since you have not read the papers, it's adultery. I said in a calm voice. Don't just sit there wondering who. I have been seeing behind your back and where your proof. She said. Since you have asked Rod Taylor and his wife and his friend you know him very well. It's Tony Davis, the well-known film star. Where's your proof? She said. See that big brown envelope on the table? Look in it if you want proof, I said. She looked at some of the photos turning to me saying, They are forgeries, they are not me, she said in a convincing voice. Sorry but they are of you because I took the photos from upstairs. And if you want more proof, watch the movie using this USB. I took of you ducking them near their swimming pool in the sunbathing area next ducking door. And here is a photocopy of your diary from two weekends ago and it's in a safe place, I said. Then came the usual thing. It was only sex I love you and only you crying her eyes out. What will daddy say when he finds out? She said, yes, I want to be there when you tell him, I said. Update 4. I picked up my last bag it had in it her engagement ring, earring, pearl necklace and a gold bracelet I had bought her. I left and went to Diana. We had drunk two bottles of wine and laughed our heads off before we went to bed and made love. Fiona did not go to work on Friday. I don't know what she was up to. It does not matter to me. Said I was at the house by 9.15. When I walked in, Fiona looked like a mess. So, you come back to me with your tail between your legs, so you want me back, she said. Go and tidy yourself up. I want to talk to you. I didn't want to talk to her. I was waiting for her father to come. Fiona came down from the bedroom dressed to perfection. She looked ready for a good ducking of me. Her father was dead on time. I opened the door to let him in. Fiona ran to him throwing her arms round his neck, calling out daddy, daddy. He stopped her, sit down there facing me. I have a few questions to ask you, he said to Fiona in a stern voice. Fiona started to talk to her. Her father shut her up. What were you doing behind Roy's back in the last month or so? His voice was stronger than before. Daddy it's all a mistake. I have told Roy he does not believe me, she said to her father. Fiona, I want you to tell me not Roy, he said his voice was even stronger than before. Daddy it's all a mistake I have told Roy he does not believe me just ask him, she said. Fiona, if you don't tell me I will be out of the door, her father said. Fiona for the last time tell me what you have been doing behind Roy's back, he said with his voice so loud. Daddy it's all a mistake please believe me, she said. Her father stood up, held his hand out to me and we shook hands. He turned his back on his only daughter. He stopped at the door, saying, I am going to destroy the three of them if Roy does not do it first. Even then they will be hurt for life. He turned round Fiona ran after him. Daddy it's all a mistake I love Roy with all my heart. I did no good. She could lie to her father face to face. The die had been cast. Fiona get a lawyer we are getting divorced. Go and get duck head off them next door you like ducking them. See you in court, I said. She got a lawyer and fought the divorce tooth and nail. Her father let her get on with it. We were seeing two family counselors that the court had ordered us to see. 
Her mother tried and tried to get father and daughter back together. I called off one night after two long months getting nowhere. Fiona, if you don't give up the fight, the recording will be on the internet. I will block out your face, so nobody will recognize you. It's up to you now, I said to her. Fiona's father rang me up, and he wanted to talk to me. I met him, and he asked me if I knew if his daughter was still seeing them next door. I told him I did not know. He asked me if we could find out using the drone. I agreed to meet him at 2 in the afternoon on Saturday. Thank God it was a long hot summer. I parked down the road and her father pulled up behind me with her mother in the car. Her mother stayed in the car, and he sat next to me. I got out and powered up the drone and sent it up over Rod's house and let it hover. Her father watched the screen on the controller. I zoomed in and the four of them in the sunbathing area. I had not noticed another car that had pulled up behind his car. Her father got out of the car and told his wife to get out. He asked two men to get out of their car. They were hired bodyguards. The four of them walked round the back of Rod's house. Then the SHD hit the fan. Her mother let out the loudest scream anyone could hear busting out into tears. The four of them stopped and jumped to their feet. Fiona was quick off the mark. Daddy. Daddy then made me do it. Running to him he pushed her to one side and she fell in the swimming pool. The bodyguards grabbed hold of Nancy and threw her in the swimming pool. Her father looked at Rod and Tony Davis saying sell up and leave town or else. The bodyguards gave them both two black eyes. She fought the case for another two months. Then I asked my lawyer to run the recording of the sad and Sunday in court. He asked the judge and went on the recording. Her father was in court. He stood up and walked out. Fiona burst into tears. She thought I would never ask for the recording to be shown. That was that. She was hitting me outside the court calling me not fit to burn. I said to her, watch the internet. Everybody you know and people you don't know will get their own private viewing of the four of you. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Final update, I got my divorce. I waited until the divorce was through and Diana and I were married. Diana's name was now Rogers. Diana went to work with the biggest smile on her face. She was wearing the earrings, a pearl necklace and a gold bracelet that once belonged to my ex. She changed her name tag on her desk. It was right opposite Fiona's desk. It read Mrs. Diana Rogers. And to top it all our wedding photo was on clear view for all to see. Fiona was ranging mad. Months passed. Diana had her moments at work saying we had screaming sex last night for hours on end. She did it every week. Diana told the whole office she was pregnant with twins from the best man in the world. That was the last nail in Fiona's coffin. Fiona was handing in her notice to the boss. He called for Diana to come in the office and in front of my ex. Diana was given her job. That made things even worse than before. Fiona packed up and when she walked out the door everyone was laughing at her. In society everybody's name kept on popping up. Rod's work dried up overnight, and Tony Davis was not offered any more movies. They even could not get a job in the pee industry. Nancy divorced Rod. Six months later there was an article in the newspaper. Rod Taylor had been hit by a hit and run driver and would spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. The police were at my door asking me about it. All I said to them was, when you find who did it tell them thanks and he or she has a friend for life that's me. The same thing happens to Tony Davis two months later. Fiona's father never forgave his daughter for what she did to me. All he and his wife wanted was grandchildren from me and Fiona, and that was not to be. But when he and his wife drink with me from time to time he called me son. Two years later a friend of mine telephoned me, telling me he had seen Fiona. She was surrounded by four men in a hotel bar. The staff had told him to stay clear of that woman. She would be dead in five years. All the men have some kind of STD of one form or another. I cannot remember if I told you. Diana did not like CW Boy movies. As for me I never watched one again. Thanks for reading. Remember, revolving time exists because of your support. And I want it to be a place where we can all come together, learn, and have a great time. Your feedback is vital. And I appreciate every single suggestion and comment you provide. Take care yourself and see you soon.